miss you all. Hope you're all holding up well in these crazy times. Everybody, I hope you're doing well. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hi, y'all. Miss you all, too. God bless you. See you soon. Hello, and welcome to Kids Together Worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church of Mendota Heights, Minnesota. I'm Amy Jo Burr, the pastor of St. Paul's, and I welcome you to join our congregation in worship today. It's the tradition at St. Paul's that on the second Sunday of every month, our children and youth join with the grown-ups in leadership of worship. And so I want to say thank you to each of the children and youth who you will see today joining in worship leadership along with me and with Lane, our director of music. Today begins a sermon series on some of the favorite uplifting Bible stories and Bible passages from our Holy Scriptures. We've asked the people of our congregation to share their favorites, and they have. And it may not surprise you to learn, when we asked the children what some of their favorite Bible stories were, one of the first things we heard was Noah's Ark. Yep, everyone loves those animals going two by two. So today we are worshiping God while looking at and studying together the story of Noah's Ark from our Holy Scripture, and that will be our theme for the day. Let's begin our time of worship with a word of prayer. Dear God, as we worship today, help us to hear you with wide open ears and receive you with wide open hearts. Bless us while we learn the stories of your word. Amen. Oh, rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, children of the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Lord said to Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Get 
those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord. So Noah, he built him, he built him an arky, arky Noah. He built him, he built him an arky, arky made it out of barky, barky, barky children of the Lord. The animals, they came on, they came on by twosies, twosies. Animals, they came on, they came on by twosies, twosies. Elephants and kangaroosy, roosies, children of the Lord. So rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, children of the Lord. It rained and poured for forty daisies, daisies rained and poured for forty daisies, daisies nearly drove them Animals, crazies, crazies, children of the Lord. The sun came out and dried up the landy, landy sun. Came out and dried up the landy, landy. Everything was fine and dandy, dandy, children of the Lord. Now that is the end of, the end of my story, story. That is the end of, the end of my story, story. Everything is hunky-dory, dory, children of the Lord. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and Give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. There's all types of signs that we need to be able to recognize if we're going to drive a car. There's signs that say stop. There's signs that point and say one way. There's signs that let us know what the speed limit is so we don't accidentally drive too fast in a way that's dangerous. There's even some billboards around places that help us know if our favorite restaurant is coming up so we can stop and get a tasty snack. Now in today's Bible story, God talks about putting the rainbow in the sky as a sign from God. In our story today, there's a huge flood and after it, people are really scared. They're afraid that another flood might come and be so big that it would destroy the whole earth. So God promises to every living creature that God will not allow a flood to destroy the earth. And as a sign so that we remember, God puts the rainbow in the sky. So the rainbow is the sign from today's story. Let's look at today's story, the story of Noah's Ark. We're reading Noah's Ark today from the Spark Storybook Bible. Kids, if you have your Spark Story Bible with you at home, Noah's Ark is on page 20. A long time passed since God created the world. People forgot about God except for one man. His name was Noah. He loved and obeyed God. I'm very sad that people have forgotten about me, God said to Noah. I'm going to bring rain to flood the earth, lots and lots of rain. Build yourself a huge boat of cypress wood. Noah did just what God said and made a big, big boat with lots of rooms. Noah was 600 years old when he entered the boat with his wife, their sons, and their sons' wives. God brought two of every kind of animal to the boat. Elephants and zebras, lions and tigers, pigs and giraffes, dogs and cats, deer and rhinos, bears and cows, horses and goats, lambs and monkeys all came two by two all different kinds of animals, birds and creepy crawly things came to the boat. 
Noah took all of them into the boat. Then the door shut behind them. Inside the big boat, the lions roared, the dogs barked, and the birds chirped. It was stuffy and stinky. It was muggy and hot. On the outside, it rained and rained. It rained big giant drops and little baby drops. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The rains came down and the flood waters came up. The water splashed on the sides of the big boat and pushed it up and down for 150 days. Finally, it rested on the top of a tall mountain. Noah waited and waited until God said to him, Come out of the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Noah's family and all the animals came off the boat. They put their feet on dry land. They ran and skipped and jumped. They twirled and danced in the sunlight. They thanked God for the land and God blessed them. Noah's family grew and grew. The animals and the birds and the creepy crawly things filled the earth again. God painted a rainbow of brilliant red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet across the sky. And God promised, never again will water flood the earth. Whenever you see the rainbow in the clouds, I will see it too, and I will remember. In today's Bible story, God keeps the animals safe on the ark two by two and makes a promise of salvation to every living creature. Every living creature, that is a whole lot of different animals. So I'm asking you, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal is the butterfly and God loves the butterflies. My favorite animal is a horse. God loves horses. My favorite animal is the wolf. God loves the wolf. My favorite animal is a bear. God loves all bears. My favorite animal is a unicorn. God loves all unicorns. God all loves us all. all. Our scripture reading today is Genesis 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The biblical account of Noah's Ark is one of the great stories of our faith tradition. It is a rich and nuanced passage of scripture, and from it we can take inspirations on many different aspects of the nature of God and how God relates to all living creatures 
and specifically to human beings. Now, when we taught this story earlier in the service with the children, we looked specifically about God caring for the people and the animals on the ark. And we hope that the children learned from this, that if God loved the people and animals on the ark, God loves them too. And that if God cared for every living creature, they also should show care to every living creature they encounter. All of these are good insights for adults as well, but we can look to other insights as well from an adult perspective. And so as I talk with you during the adult chat, I want to remind us that biblical scholars identify four different sources which are contributors to the book of Genesis. And the Noah's Ark story comes from the J source, which is the oldest of those four sources. Now, the biblical passages which come from this oldest source are filled with um, stories which have to do with some of our deepest and even primal human fears and concerns. Noah's Ark is a good example of this as it deals with the concept of natural disaster, in this case through a great flood. Although I think its themes could be generalized to think about any natural disaster, to think about flood or earthquake or hurricane or even pandemic. Uh, these are great forces acting. And so even in our modern times, a natural disaster can be terrifying because of its huge, huge force. If you've ever had the misfortune to be caught in rising floodwaters, or even to see video of rising floodwaters, you know the type of immense damage they can cause. And it is terrifying even in current times. Now, in our current times, we have things like Doppler radar and a seismograph that can help us predict and respond to and prepare for some of our instances of natural disaster. But at the time that Genesis was written, people had no such technology. And so natural disasters could come on them suddenly without warning with immense and destructive power. And it was terrifying. And so ancient peoples would have presumed that because the power unleashed through a natural disaster was beyond human force, it must be from the divine. Now, the important thing about the story is not this assumption that divine power would have caused something which was greater than human power. The important part of the story is how God is responding and acting in the midst of destruction and fear. And in the midst of destruction and fear in this story, God is providing salvation, deliverance, and care for every human being and indeed for every living creature. This tells us a lot about our understanding of God, that God's care for us is great, no matter what the environment might be unleashing upon us. And that even during the most difficult times, God wishes for life to remain and continue. And so God will provide a way for salvation and renewal. And as a sign of this, God places a beautiful rainbow in the sky as a remembrance for ancient people to look up after the storm and see we made it and God is with us protecting us. As I said, natural disasters are terrifying even in present circumstances and it remains one of our deep human fears to be afraid of the immense and destructive powers that can be released through them. And so in the midst of that, we remember 
God is with us. God is our protector. God is our shield. Our scriptures sing these type of praises to God. You probably know the words for Psalm 18, which describes God as our protector, our deliverer, our rock, our fortress. Just a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the passage from Romans 8, 38 through 39, which talks to us about the fact that nothing can separate us from God's love, not height nor depth, not life nor death, the passage goes through many things and tells us that nothing can separate us from God's love. As we look at the flood story today, we would say not even floodwaters can separate us from God's love. And so I remind us today of this great message of who God is. It is God's nature to provide renewal, salvation, and protection to every living creature. May our hearts receive comfort knowing that even when faced with destructive powers beyond human understanding, God's salvation is present for us, God's protection is present with us, and God's strength holds us up in the middle of even flood or natural disaster. Amen. Please join me in the community prayer. Thank you, God, for starlit nights and sunny, joy-filled days. Thank you, God, for loving us and teaching us your ways. Thank you, God, for soaring birds who daily sing your praise. Thank you, God, for loving us and teaching us your ways. Thank you, God, for listening to every prayer we raise. Thank you, God, for loving us and teaching us your ways. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive Give us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we gather at the communion table. May God bless us as we come as one family to share this holy meal together. All are welcome to come to the table, 
whether or not you are formally a member of a church, if God's calling you to participate in this holy ritual where God feeds us by God's very hand, then you are welcome at this table today. The prayer of consecration, which I pray today, extends not only to the bread and juice here with me in the video, but also to the bread and juice which you hold in your hand. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather around this table today with hearts filled with gratitude. We're thankful, O oh God, as we remember how you cared for each of the animals two by two on the ark. We're grateful for the sound of singing birds in the spring and the warmth of golden sunshine. And just as you cared for those animals on the ark so long ago, God, we know that you care for all of your creatures even today. We thank you, O oh God, for so many things, but especially we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to the earth in human form, who lived, died, and rose again for our sake. We remember how his life showed us the way towards you, how he lived a great example for us. And we remember how he gathered in an upper room with his disciples to share a special meal. Jesus took the bread and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after dinner, he also took the cup, gave thanks to you, shared it with his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, O oh God, we come to this holy table in remembrance of that night. And we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and juice. Let them be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we might be fed and made one at this table one in our belief of you, one in ministry to all the world. And now, O oh God, we ask that you would bless not only this bread and juice, but all of us gathered here, that we might be strengthened and filled with the fruit of your spirit as we gather at this table. All of this we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you and me, for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. We give thanks for this holy meal of communion. Amen. Today's Bible memory verse comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 13. It says, I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign.
May the road rise up to meet you. May the winds be always at your back. May the rain pour softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.